And welcome to another beautiful edition of Phenomenal Being. My name is Constance Ajima Sebo. Oh yes, a program in which we dig deep into the lives of prominent people in the society as well as outside the country. And today, we are privileged to have a Salusha Stanga. Please don't go away. We have Sir Lucius Banda and welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we are looking at the off stage of your life. Who is Lucius Banda? Off stage, yeah. I, I like the terminology. Um, well, Lucius Banda is a, is a father, uh, a husband, a brother, and of course a former member of parliament and a number of other titles. But Above all, Lucius Banda is a musician. All right, okay, thank you very much. And tell us briefly, how did you grow up and how were you raised? Well, I was born in uh, 1970 in a village called Sosola uh, in Balaka, uh, some 49 years ago. I grew up in Balaka, uh, learning early childhood in Ponda Primary School. Um, much of my time was spent at Balaka Parish. I was like an older boy there with all the dreams of becoming a priest. I would have been Father Lucius right now. Uh, grew up in such a setup. My brother Paul being a musician, playing uh, with a band called Alleluia Band, which he, he actually founded, joined that and then grew up through the musical uh, steps uh, to, to, to the level I am here. In brief, that's that's my life. Okay, all right. We're looking at the old-time musician, and you've been in the industry for so long. How did you start? How did you end up being an artist? Maybe somebody inspired you. How did that begin? Well, like I said before, dreams of childhood. I, I thought I would be a priest. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd be a father. But then, um, without stopping me from my wish of becoming a father, Paul taught me music. I was only eight years old, and he was around, I think, 14, 15, somewhere there. Because there's a difference of about seven years between us. A lot of people think Paul and me, we are like brothers, but I'm basically a kid brother to him. So he would force me. I want to go play football with all other friends, just as, as boys would love to. But he always would pull me on his way to, to, to go help him maintain the tempo as he was playing the guitar. I should be clapping hands, I should be giving up the tempo to him. So slowly I started liking it because it, it looked different. Everyone else would play football, but there were very few of us who would play music. So it became nice. The girls used to look, look at us with a different eye. <laughs> you know, like age. Oh, yeah. uh, so I always said, oh, oh, so this thing is nice. Okay, so I continue. Uh, when I got age 13, he tried me with a guitar. I tried to play guitar, but actually I didn't like it as a kid. Now I, I wish I, I was playing a guitar. Then he tried me on a keyboard. There I played very well. Later on, I joined the band. Um, I started playing with this Alleluia band. So I've been, I, I was with Alleluia band from around 1985 while I was going to school. Going to school. I joined full time Alleluia band when I finished school. Briefly, then I went to South Africa to embark on my solo career. Did my first album in 1993, which was released here in 1994. Onwards, I went on. I stayed with Alleluia for four more years. 1997 is when I formed my own Zambani band, which until today is 22 years old. Okay, all right. I will go back to where your brother was, was pushing you, was actually forcing you to go and sing. You know, a lot of people who are pushed to do something don't end up being successful. But we're looking at your music career as a success. How did you benefit? Well, um, 
maybe because I took a different path altogether. Um, at, at, at that time, most musicians were singing about love or they were singing about gospel. It was either spiritual music, gospel music, or love songs. But I was the old one now. I chose to express my feeling, my revolutionary uh, thoughts through music. So my music was, came out different. And so it was a, an instant success when it came out. The first album that I released, Mabala and you remember, it became a hit instantly because it spoke differently. It wasn't talking about love, it wasn't talking about spirituality and all that. It was a, a different issue. So it became so huge and so successful. I think that's, that's a secret for my breakthrough. We have a lot of artists in the country who think music cannot be persuaded as a career too. How do you look at that? No, music is a very serious career. In fact, it is here in Malawi that is it's, it's highly underrated uh, that we actually mess around with it. We can actually combine it with uh, MPC. Uh, elsewhere, it's a huge career. It's, a, it's so big that you cannot even think of mixing it with another thing. Musicians elsewhere are huge people, are people who are regarded in a very high esteem that you cannot compare. Uh, so I don't encourage those musicians that you should focus on music. It's a serious career elsewhere. All right, sometimes maybe it's failing. You are an artist. Okay, maybe they fail to pursue music as a career because there are obstacles underway. Maybe you would be able to spot out those obstacles. What can it be? Well, there are a lot of obstacles. Number one obstacle, much as we talk about piracy these days, but number one obstacle that the industry, the music industry has in Malawi is lack of sponsorship. Um, music is an industry which survives uh, leaning on other industries. While we have uh, paid our rent, while we have bought our food, paid our school fees, but all the groceries for the home is when we want to listen to music. So it comes at the end of everybody's budget. If people will look at it as a useless thing because it comes at the end of the budget, the music will not survive. But it is very important in our life because without music, as for Malawians, without music we cannot operate. I'll give an example of funerals in Malawi, it's all music. Weddings is all music. Every function is all about music. There will never be a function which will go without music, without people singing. I wish companies would budget music in the first place because it's what happens everywhere. There will be places where, where the company is dealing in cement, uh, there will be somewhere where cement will not be needed. But there will always be music. So I, I thought, Companies in Malawi, uh, beginning with the government itself, they must always include music as a package which is included in human life. You're hearing a lot of suicides and stuff like that. People do not have time to recreate, they don't have time for entertainment. Because of that, they're resorting to bad solutions, killing themselves. Because music is not there, because the arts are not there to soothe their hearts and all that, to remove the stress. Sure, so. I think companies in Malawi must invest in the music industry. Okay, all right, and that is very, very interesting. You talked about the obstacles. All right, I need to draw their match. You know, sometimes people say the copying of international music maybe is not making our industry grow. How true can that be? Well, music is music. There's no music which is. Uh, which belongs anywhere else. Everyone contributes music to the rest of the world. Um, if I tell you some things that are called, they are coming from this country, they may not be coming from that particular country. Uh, of, 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 of the recent time, I've noticed there's a style which was unique to Malawi. We were calling it Champete Gachimanga. Now I'm hearing songs from Nigeria with that beat. 
Now I'm saying, here they are, they have stolen it. They have stolen it, but because they are a bigger economy, they have gone to bigger studios, they have spaced it up, it's coming here. Very soon it will start sounding as if we have taken it from Nigeria. Quella music came from Malawi and went to South Africa with the Madala when they went to Teba. I <laughs> went to Teba and I went to Teba and I went to but Kuela, 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 Kuela music is, is, is Malawian music. But today, if you say Kuela on the Google, it's yeah, South African it's music. African. You see? <laughs> so it doesn't make sense for someone to say, hey, Malawian, they, they sing international music. Come on. All the music, there was no drum in America. The drum was introduced by the slaves in America. It, 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 and, uh, the music, the Western music, it's the ones we hear, the ones that the Beethoven's of this world who sing the, what they call classical, without drums. It's us Africans who introduce the drums. So if we take music from America, the styles from America and play them, we are not, we are not actually moving out of our style. It's, it's, it's all, it's the same music. Okay, so what you're saying is maybe we should, we can, we can cover, yeah, that's all right. I'm not covering us in everything, but we need to put a little creativity in that. Yes. Now, what we need is to bring out what makes it now unique, what makes it different. Because the world is looking for everybody's contribution. The secret about life is when you come on this earth, you must produce something that's new. Right, okay. Remember you're watching Phenomenal Being on your favorite Rainbow TV. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I remember you're watching a film of being on the game TV and yes, we are talking to Sir Lucius Banda. We're digging deep into his life. All right, we were talking about Malawian music being copied and not making it a success. And then you say we just need to do the same music, but maybe we need to be very, very creative about it. Yes, we were on that one. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's true, like I said, um, we, we need to make sure that we bring something new. If you go back to history of music, all the people that created their own styles, like Bob Marley came up with the reggae music. If you listen to it, it's pop music. Only that instead of the keyboard going, it's going, but the chord sequence is the same. So they call it reggae. Um, uh, Felakuti of Nigeria had this recorded highlight the music that they are singing. It's from that platform that you see a lot of youngsters today in Nigeria they are singing the same Felakuti highlight, but they are now modernizing it and changing it and improving it. Uh, what one needs is to take out what you have in your country. Um, here we have got Vimbuza With the Nigerians are doing very well. Yeah? Uh, songs like I. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, right. That is Wimbuza. <laughs> we have it from Karonga. <laughs> Only that our boys, when they, 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 they play that style, they think they are copying Nigerian like because they've been late in bringing the Wimbuza out. So we, you just need to take what you have and take it out to the world quickly. The one who introduces it first and patent it becomes their own. Sure. We are capable of doing it like he is saying. All right, now looking at your life, a musician who turned into an active politician. How did you think of that? Well, maybe maybe thinking, following the philosophy of, of Malcolm X, that after singing for a long time, I thought I should start swinging. <laughs> uh, I, I remember that saying when uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was always doing the, the matches, the demonstrations and all that. Uh, Malcolm was uh, actually the violent kind of and he was telling Martin Luther that my brother you sing too much I think we've sang for enough let's now start swinging I'm trying to say I thought I had sung for too long and maybe I should try to go and understand the other percep perception I should come up with 
a, a practical um, result of what happens in politics. And true, I think I was right. When I joined politics, I learned a lot of things which I never knew. Before I went to parliament, I was singing against parliamentarians. I spoke a lot. I said things which some of them today I get embarrassed. Because when I became an MP, is when I understood that a member of parliament is the most un understood person in the country. People's expectations are so high, so high, so that they even think of him as someone who receives money in his hands to go and do developments in the constituency. When in actual fact, he is there just to approve the amount and the money is sent to the disassembly where it's handled by the technocrats there. He has no chance to even touch the money. Uh, to a point, if you are a member of parliament who is not corrupt, who doesn't steal government money like I was, all you get is a salary, which my salary, when they remove everything, was as little as 700 something thousand, which honestly I would distribute in the next three hours soon after it comes into the account and it's finished because everyone in the constituency would bring their problems. Primary school, Mananga, um, Kuna uniform, Mananga, secondary, Kuna drama, Dimadiro, Tukuna, a lot of the things in the city, in Bonanza, 700,000 would be blown in a day. So you have to start looking for money from your own pocket. In my case as a musician, I'll go sing, make money, throw it into the so that I remain a good MP, but at the end of the day, you still don't satisfy the people. So, I can't sing too much bad about an MP, because now I understand. <laughs> so, that's the more reason I went into politics. I'm, I'm, I've am I'm, learned. Some people say, now you're quiet. Yeah, now I know that it's not always the MP. Sometimes it's not always the president. Sometimes it's us, the people. We ask them too much from the leaderships. I heard, I've been yeah. following what you've been saying, and but you're talking about the experience, how, okay, how it is in the parliament. But you're still more and contested like this year. Mm, but you did not make it to the parliament. You had an experience. Okay, it might not be the worst because if you went back to do it, that means you still had dreams. Yes. How was your experience? Well, my experience was good. I, I was happy that I was able to represent the people of my constituency. But the challenge that you have is. You go there under a political party. So the political party is expecting you to behave in, this, in a certain way. While your principles are telling you something else different. Uh, on the other hand, the people in the constituency are expecting something else. So honestly, it's, it's a difficult experience. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a hard thing. You only discover that it is so hard when you're out of it. Unfortunately, just like this, it is the only way you can get into heaven through. You only get out of parliament through losing. Because when you're in there, you still believe, I want to save people. I want to save people. I want to make it better. Until when you lose the elections. I have been out of parliament now for three months. Tell you the truth, honestly, honestly, I, 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 I can't stop admiring life out of parliament. It's, it's so nice. Okay, so now you're saying if you were given a chance again to contest, you would not? I would think twice. <laughs> I don't want to say completely because I may disappoint some other people. But I would really think twice because uh, uh, life is good out of power. All right, which makes me think, all right, now let's say this. Do you think it was a good idea to get yourself into politics, to get yourself involved in politics. It was a good idea because the intention, the intention was right. The intention was to, to, to one, experience what happens and understand it. Um, on the other hand was to try and contribute, to try to make a difference. But I may not have succeeded in, in, in making the difference, but at least I know where the problem is. I'm more informed and, and when people see me, when people are discussing politics, I am much more sober. I, I comment from a very well-informed pers perspective. I, I don't just speak. Because honestly, people that think that MPs are people who eat money, are rich, are very educated. Some of them PhD holders 
the beef oh my people won't go to get a drama you, you have to say, even this one thinks it's like that it's only when you have been an mp when you be very sympathetic i even feel sorry for my successor because right now out there they're looking for coffins from him and this is a new guy who's just started the work he needs to sit down and get used to the work but right now they are already judging him three months in the office so it's it's i know where the problem is so i don't regret going in there to me it was a service i uh, sorry i'm not trying to be pompous but i was okay financial and otherwise before i went into parliament so i was descending down to a, a smaller job um unlike maybe to other people it becomes like a, a promotion in life to me to me it's like I'm, 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 I'm getting out of my my lane to go down and help a situation where i got rejected it was the same night i said wow thank you i think people now are okay they can get a better person and then i go back to my luxury my luxurious life i'm now back to my luxurious life back to the musician back to the musician champagne caviar life quality flights <laughs> life <laughs> that is very beautiful okay yes. now okay i'm just looking back to the time that you were in the house yes and you were still performing how did you divide your time i tried my best to give the weekends to the shows and the weekdays to parliament work but even in there there was always a cry the music industry was suffering uh, i saw a lot of people soon after i lost um we were very excited. Ah, oh, now we enjoy the music. Now he put time on the music. Uh, on the parliamentary side, I said, no, he was busy with shows. He didn't do much development. So, yeah, there was a, there was a conflict of interest somewhere there. But uh, I, I thought if people would measure me in future, they would still see that I did both. I tried to balance my time. Okay, all right, on a lighter note, you have music, like you have albums. Which one is your favorite? Musical albums are like children. You can never have a favorite. Okay. <laughs> but I would tell you, I would tell you the highest selling one, that's Ceasefire. This one is the highest selling album ever in this country. Not from me alone, but of all albums that were released in Malawi, no album has ever sold as much as Ceasefire. Right, okay, so finally, finally, you can just tell us about your ups and downs in the music, in, in the music career. Well, my music career, the ups, much as people look at me as one of the most successful artists in Malawi, I don't find myself to be that successful because I think I should have been introduced Malawian music out there to the rest of the world. I should have been known worldwide. Yes, I've been to a number of countries. By the way, this month I'm going to perform in Germany. I may proceed to Ukraine. Next month I'm in UK. But when we go in those countries, it's maybe only in Germany and Ukraine where I perform to people that are not Malawians. But the other months when I go to the UK, when I go to South Africa, it's Malawians that are performing for. We would also love, just like Krista came here, we should also be invited elsewhere to perform for the people of that country. If I did that, I would have said I've been successful, but I, I, I still look at myself as, as, a, as a failure musically because I haven't introduced the music to the rest of the world. Um, however, locally, I think we've done a lot. I think we can pat ourselves on the back that, yes, we've done it. Um, the laws are the same, the piracy, lack of sponsorship from companies, no political will from the government, no recreational centers has been created. It's really hard for us, but we, we still thank God that at least we have done our best to get the music to a certain level. Okay, all right. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. I'm afraid that is all we had in today's afternoon being. I know you enjoyed the episode. Until next time, from me, Constance, till I'll see you. It's a goodbye. Mm -hmm.